Kalma. Pulls you about podcast show. Story time by Douglas Craig from the Criminy Insane series, book one. Part one. He was on that boat when it happened. Trey Cramble glanced up, thinking he heard something, perhaps a cry of a gull. He saw the tall white cliffs to the west of the island, and the actual wonder of Catalina the clink the kirk and the rocks, as it is properly known, within those cliffs a series of interconnecting <laughs> caves and tunnels that he once believed created a great labyrinth within the island. As a boy, he scaled those rocks and explored what seemed like endless trails for the caverns. His father had taught him to shoot a gun from those cliffs, not to kill anything. That was forbidden. Shoot bottles and squeak, and even as a warning in the air, to a trespass if the situation warranted, but never do anything that, that never anything that breathed. A gun firing in the cold, dark, in, a gun firing in the dark. Morning, he felt cold, blank, sweat blank, break out um, along his back and neck. Not from the heat, but what seemed momentary like a primal fear of creation itself, the sea, the rocks, the endless sky. He knew it was irrational, perhaps even a sigh of relief, so, even a sign of a panic attack. A second later, the world was normal again. Fear was gone. The gun, which had accidentally gone off in his remembered dream, was silent, a white flash in a dark room. Later, later he remembered that the sense that he had heard a warning shot. By that moment, he was more concerned with his fishing line. He developed that capacity over years to forget painful memory and tend to look what was directly in front of him. During the three hours at sea, all he could possibly fear would come to pass, but from a distance. For now, he could relax and try to enjoy the sea, the air, the boat. The boat was a bay runner west coater, a 14-footer, welded marine metal, made for rough weather, but designed to transverse the 20, but not to traverse the 26 something miles between San Pedro and the mainland and Catarina Island. It's harbour fishing. The men who rented the boat told him it would be at anybody's risk to take it further than two miles from the island. He and his wife were barely out a mile on the boat. He wished he could take it further out, but not just for fishing, but for peace and calm. The boat was rented for the week and came with red screw nicks and dents of a kind of pillar. The metal. The outbound motor was a two cylinder with thirty five horsepower, which had he had a hard time starting. He had killed a motor an hour before and cast his line down. His wife C- Curly didn't enjoy fishing but she longed being at, but loved being out at sea. She sat her baby back down for a moment and scanned the island as she as if she felt left something behind there and perhaps Wanted to go back for it. Water's too warm, he said. All the squid probably moved out, out on cold currents. On a yellow tail followed. Maybe even a white sea bass too. I'd be damn lucky if I'd catch a halibut. Poor baby, Carly said. We could have a yellow tail up with a calf without having to put a hook in some mouth, fish mouth. His wife returned her attention to the paperwork. Romance, he said, hardly is the star of a guy who goes with wife on a vacation and manages to make the whole trip as stressful as possible to his wife has no choice but run off with Katarina boy. The sea was a silent sheet of brilliant cobalt, the sky was a bone white, the gentle the boat was gently rocking. He did most of his fishing near the rocks, just be- beyond the breakwater. Carly insisted on bringing cooler sh- full of sh- sodas. He knew it would be a problem later. He watched her as she drank a Pepsi, her eye, her dark hair shining beneath his old San Diego Perry's baseball cap. 
which she kept, kept the sun off her face. At first she was beginning slightly worried about having spent her entire life at a beach down in San Diego. Why had less vanity more out of fear of the skin cancer and weakened her father before his death? But she was she was so far away from death that he that's what he thought then. She looked as if she she as he had twenty as far as he was concerned, although he claimed she he, she was getting fat. Actual truth be known, he had put in a bit of a punch, which he was trying to fend off with exercise routine, because he couldn't give up the twice weekly trips to a local ice cream place for banana splits. He just he was just thirty six, jogged four miles each, four miles, four miles three days a week, and swam a mile or two at a local gym. Well, who thought of it? He'd been an athletic, an athletic kid, but for some reason in his late twenties he had started a regime which allowed him a few beers and some ice cream. One thing he couldn't stand to do was sit up so that was the last punch. There is it. Then there was his faults as he sat in the small boat clutching his pen, a fifty SS rod, praying for a nice fat fish. There was one thought that played him for the harsh year. Finally driven him to take this vacation, perhaps not even quit his job. He kept that thought secret buried deep within his mo- him most of the time. He never forgotten about it now. Catalina's Pacific sun, so far removed from his nightmares, he soaked it in. Cool spray and mist as it took a boat rot, the flatness of the light across the water, the heat of his back of his neck from the sun, the feeling that one of his legs had fallen asleep. The first 24 hours on the Catalina had been spent recovering from the stress of work. The next 24, he just wanted to get out of bed and do something. Now he wished things could always be that way. Right at this moment, right now. How beautiful his wife was to him. How much she had taught him in those 14 years together. The other fights and trials, how things had worked out. If they meant to be meant to. There was a loveliness in her he could not find when he looked at the other woman. It went further than flesh and bone. There was some spark within her. He grinned as he watched her. She she was everything to him. Sometimes, before he met her, he had been stupid, a clod, someone who was destined to muddle through life uneventfully. After meeting her, well, to him at least, it being like a metaphorical transformation. Love itself become the most powerful transforming and I had ever encountered. He knew of men who took their wives for granted, but he was not one of them. Trey, she said, calling him by his family nickname. Trey! He leaned towards her because apparently she was about to tell him a secret. She whispered, I gotta go, sweetie, right now. So, lady Lack. I thought so. I told you not to bring those many sodas. So I, I know. Why is it such a problem? You ain't exactly been wheeling them in, she half grinned. Besides, your guys have it easy. You can hang it off your side of the boat. You can hang it off the side of the boat. I have to lean over the edge and probably capsize the whole thing. Then she gripped his hands and said almost sternly, I really have to go. Starting the motor was difficult. He had to put all his weight into it, pushing his feet against the tension. He pulled on the rope. The boat locked less gently, clearly scrubbed to the sides of it. Finally, he got it going, steered towards the shore. It took half an hour to bring the boat back to the dock. It was early in the day, so tourist boats are still circling around Avalon. He had to move his small fishing boat around the side of the docks and then kill the motor and, and row in. As soon as they pulled aside one of the, one of the docks, Carly practically let her row. Leaving him rocking, she ran into in her baby suit, towel around her waist, carried all slung over her shoulder towards the restrooms. He wiped his forehead. It's going to be a hot day. He grabbed a doctor's soda out of the cooler. He tried not to work, think about work. 
Every now and then it pops into his head. His work was a separate world. Some of his co-workers didn't even know he was married. They didn't know that his nickname for children was Trey. They thought of him as Bob Billy Campbell, William Campbell the Third. It was a world he hoped that never touched Carly of the other kids, not in the big way, not the dangerous way he felt whenever he was among the patients. He was, he was, he wasn't even sure he could do anything else for a living. It wasn't like he was a doctor or even a therapist. He was a psych tech, a supervisor, even though it was a secure prison. He never expected to make it a career. He, he tended to go and get a master's and maybe more. Become a therapist. But then Tessa had been born and then Mark and Scully was at, 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 actually able to go and finish her master's. Then the money and security at Denham State became so good. He could... He could. How could he walk away from it? The kids' life. How could he make a change without disrupting the whole entire flow of the world? But now he was considering quitting his job to start over, because the stress had gotten to him with recent events. Carney was making enough to cover for both of them. If they drew their belts in tight, he maybe go back for the graduate degree. In those, in those seven days of Catalina. He was going to figure out what the hell he was going to do with the rest of his life. His dream was to live in the Jimmy Buffett song, The Bum, around the islands, like the one at the end of his, like this one at the end of his day, to the end of his days. He knew this was the most practical plans and more definitely, would definitely not put Mark and Teresa through Stanford future. Neither would the plane totally wash with Carly. But he thought, Looking over at the cold casino hills, gone, it's another magnificent day unfolding Avalon. More stress, no f- more nightmares. That stream patience coming at me. No more remember Jojo's ripping his, his gentles off and his hands. Or Linda Davis naked and drenched in her blood, using a broken off friends of wood as a weapon, grabbing at him, jabbing at him. This is the ba- that this that th- th- these are the basics of Daniel State. Word name does not dare speak his name to those political correct times. Insane, and a shadow amongst the dark morning became visible with a white flash of gunshot. If the, if the word fear could be written with light against darkness, his beeper began reboting in its shirt pocket. Darn it, he must have mumbled, knowing it was some emergency from work, which he probably didn't, and he didn't even know the and didn't need to know about. He didn't leave down the state for even three days about Jim Benson messing it up and having the wrong meds to the wrong patient. That you see hoped it was something that simple. Later he would remember how innocent things were a moment before he made that phone call. Later he remember even the smell of the sea wood rotten and fishy as part of a wonderful innocence that would never again exist for him. Down the State Hospital for criminal, saying for criminal justice takes up 23 acres and has its own post office. Officially, it's located in Durham, California. A town in circles, it is called Cunwell. It's in Riverdale County, just northwest of Monroe Valley. A small canyon is between two rim edges, edges. With chain-like fences are 20 feet high. At the top, in circle of coiled razor wire. Within the tall outer forest, there's a shorter forest, forest fence, less than ten feet high, which carries a thin electric current enough to stun a human being for several minutes. Twenty years ago, only one high fence, but every once in a while, a patient escaped. Town of Codwell had none to appreciate it, even had known so it. A leftover from the air day air raid days. After midnight signaling that the one that one of those fighters was on Darren's fighters was on the run. History of Darren is the history of America's attitude towards both criminals and mental illness. The hospital was built in the eighteen nineties, originally it was completed underground. In those days a paranoid schizophrenic who had murdered or committed some antisocial crime was treated worse than an animal. 
chain to wall through pushed through Mrs. with a stick through a slot in the door. The underground chambers permitted with escapes, and the community at large did not have to did not have to be reminded of the hospital's existence. There were fewer than ten percent of patients with a history of criminal activity. Many of them were alcoholics and drug addicts, faced there by living fa- by loving families. Durham remained underground just after World War Two. Then, when, because at the centre of lobotomies and radical treatments and ice baths, shock treatments, one doctor used to walk wound to wound around each shock patients when it was mood took her. Something sometimes it, it was the best treatment available. The patients arrived at Dunham began to come by the way of the criminal justice system. Famous court in Los Angeles, 95A, which was also known as Zoo, because the outbursts from those with suffering from psychotic rages during their areas. But which, with the new class of pet patient, they only became come known as crack up poets. A joke, a joking reference to the comparative luxury which some of the inmates lived. There were escapes occasionally, rising all time peak of three years within two decades. In the 1960s, with the opportunity in search of psychedelic, psychotropic drug pills, became the favourite candies of Dome. The fifth, 10 to 15 fences went up and, and nearly constant, and the constant drops of Sketch dropped dramatically with the consent sensation of the other dangerous cinema. In patients with a more with equitative approach to the patient care. Durham patient now wears an orange Durham t shirt with cosmetics cosmetics in the morning vegetal therapy in the afternoon and can tell friends and and can tell, call friends collect an opening call costs calls and money from the outside. Occasionally, if you're sneaky enough to pay, patients can even make love as as the hospital is not only is, made, is it not only made up of both male and female patients but also allowed to intermingle freely at certain times of the day. Belief is a vigorous meds with each patient which keeps them far away enough to keep away from his or her to fear. Not after them calls and the money for the outsiders. Occasionally, they're sneaky enough that patients can make love. As hospital is not only made up of both male and female patients, but allowed to be immediately free at certain times of the day. The belief is that the various meds which each patient ingests keeps them far enough away from his true, his or her true feelings to be as to be safe. But even a passionate cannot be drugged or shot from a man's system.